Hello, today we're going to talk about some things that you need to know in order to really lead the song. The first one is to look like a leader. You need uh, to take the role of leading God's people very seriously. That means that you're going to lead all the time that you're in the presence of God's people. Let them know that you're serious about what you're going to do that you are a man of prayer, that you are a man of Bible study, that you are a man who, who puts time and effort into leading God's people into the very throne room of God. The attitude that you display while you are leading worship and in the time prior to your leading worship will do a lot in helping keep people together as we enter the throne room of God. You always need to be prepared. Be ready at all times so that you are uh, looking like a leader and people can depend on you and can put their faith and trust that you're going to take them where they need to go. Preparation for song leading really begins way ahead of time. It, it, it's it's going to take you some time to put together each worship service. So you're going to have to be a person of prayer and Bible study and the selection of your songs. All those things need to have happened well ahead of the time that you stand in front of an audience. Pray that you're going to be able to do a good job for the people. And pray that your heart is going to be right with God as you are leading his people in worship. You need to study your Bible. You know, as a leader of God's people, you need to know enough about Scripture in order to lead songs that are sound in their meaning. In other words, you want to make sure that every song uh, matches the teaching of God's Word. Not every song in our hymn book actually uh, expresses correctly what the Bible teaches. You know, there's songs that we need to be very, very careful of. One of the ones that really comes to mind is the second stanza of Jesus is Coming Soon, where it talks about when these signs come to pass, nearing the end at last, it will come very fast, trumpets will sound. Well, you know, the, 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 the Bible teaches us that no, there, there will be no sign. But instead, we need to be ready at all times. So I would suggest not to lead songs that actually talk about uh, signs that are coming to pass. Uh, choose songs, not only that are scriptural, but choose songs that vary in, in tempo, vary in keys, vary in style. Why do we do that? Well, it keeps the, the worship service uh, alive. Choose songs that complement the sermon. Get with your preacher ahead of time to find out what the topic is for the sermon, and then pick out songs that actually go with that. Choose various themes. It doesn't necessarily always have to be on the sermon. Choose themes like the life of Jesus. You would pick out songs about the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. All of those songs could come together to tell the story of the life of Jesus. And then also you could even pick out songs that introduce the uh, worship time. You could uh, pick out songs that say, off we come together, as a, as a come together, come we that love the Lord. Uh, those are songs that, that call us to worship. Then you would have those that would edify one another, songs that teach us to love each other during this time. And then when it comes time for the Lord's Supper, lead a song that has to do with the Lord's Supper. And of course, at the invitation, it's time to call people to examine their hearts to see if they are right with God. So what songs would you choose in the theme of the life of Christ? What, what songs would you choose that would introduce the various times of our worship? 
song selection is very, very important. You don't want to lead the same 10 or 15 songs over and over and over. You want variety in your song. Take time to pray over the selection that you make. Take a moment to meet with maybe the preacher or someone else that is taking part in the worship time uh, to see if maybe there are other suggestions or songs that, that they might want to include in the worship time. And make sure that if you're working with other worship leaders that you get your songs together well ahead of time so that, so that they can put together maybe a printed uh, order of worship or maybe you need to get your songs to the projection team so that they can get the slides ready for the, the video on Sundays. They need to know these things. And as a worship leader, you take the lead on that to make sure that you're always prepared so they can be prepared. Now, what about standing up in front of the group of people? Well, you need to face the worship group. That is the audience, right? You want to dress appropriately, smile welcomely, start on time. Make sure that if you use a microphone, and hopefully you will, if you use a microphone, make sure that it's positioned where it will pick up your voice. If you use a handheld microphone, you need to learn how to get close enough to the microphone that it picks up your voice, but not so close that it begins to uh, feed back or distort. And be careful with the guy that's running the microphone. He needs to uh, not constantly up and down with the volume so that you don't come over too loud or too soft. He needs to realize that you can make the adjustment on your handheld. And then make sure that the projection team and other worship leaders are ready well ahead of the time that you take the uh, stage or the podium. They need to be ready so that you can be ready. If you stand behind a lecture, make sure that there's enough of your body showing that people can pick up on your body language and your hand language. You should be able to have your hand from the top of your head to about the middle of your waist. That's, that is a good area for uh, hand motions. Anything bigger than that is really distracting. Anything smaller than that serves no purpose, really. It's good to stand away from the podium if you can so that you can engage your whole body in sign language to keep the people together on tempo and, and uh, as you hold notes out or close them down. When you stand, stand with one foot a little in front of the other whichever is your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, your right foot should be a little bit in front of the other. If you're left-handed, your left foot should be a little in front of your right foot. And then put your weight on the balls of your feet. That's the area right behind your toes. This gives you the ability to balance the best and it'll keep you from swaying left to right as you, do, as you go through the, the, the time up there. Uh, it balances your weight and you don't uh, shift weight from one side to the other. Get rid of any body movement that does not accentuate your leading. Now it's time to announce the number. Remember, you are not the preacher. So keep your comments and remarks to a bare minimum. There's nothing wrong with explaining a, a difficult word like in the song Night with Eben Pinion. You might remind people that Eben Pinion means night of the dark wing. Announce the number very clearly, loudly enough, uh, or the name of the song if you're using projection. And then pitch the song with your pitch pipe. We've gone over how to find the starting note, how to find the key, and then sing up or down to the starting note. Now it's time to look up and get everyone's attention. You need to look around and, and meet various people's eye so that they know it's time to start the song. If you use hand motions, put your hand up and be ready to start with your voice and your hand. Oft we come together. See how it started? 
Off we come together. So your, your hand and your voice and the taking in of the breath is very, very important. If you don't use your hand, and that's perfectly okay, people need to see every breath that you take. Jesus loves me, this I know. You see how I took that breath and everybody started with me? Jeez, and my head came down to start that note. That's perfectly fine, but they need to, you need to accentuate those motions big enough so that everyone sees it. Everyone should see every breath you take, and it will keep everyone together throughout the whole song. With your face, your head, your hand motions, and your voice, it's important to use them to keep the song going. Make sure that you're loud enough to be heard, and not so loud that you're overpowering the people in the audience, because they will stop singing if they feel like they're, they have to listen to you because you're too loud. Your hand motions need to be distinct. If you're going to use a pattern, make sure that it's the right pattern. If it's 4-4, four, four, it's down, in, out, up, down, in, out, up. If it's a two pattern, it's one, two, down, up, down, up. If it's a treble pattern or three counts, it's down, out, up, down, out, up, down, out, up, down, out, up. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it's that simple. Maintain that. Just waving your hand all over the place is not serving anything. Your head nods can do the same thing. Watching the people watch your head, not necessarily doing, the, doing this all the time, but when it comes time to start raising your head up, and then when it comes time to stop dropping your pitch down, um, off we go. Uh, let's see, let's think of a song. And when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. So watch your head motions and let people see those motions to be exact. Maintain your eye contact throughout the entire song so people know what you're doing and they can keep up. All right? Keep those things in play at all times. And then when should you really be looking at the group? Well, you should look at the group at the beginning of the song usually through the first verse. Now, a, a verse is basically one trip across the page. That's a verse. A stanza is from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, one trip through the whole song. So when you sing a song, you start by singing the first verse of the song, and everybody's watching and you're watching them. It will help keep everybody together. Look up as you approach the chorus, so that people are watching you in case you slow down or speed up. And then you should be watching through the first several words of the chorus. Then look at the group as you come to the end of the verse and at the end of uh, the, the song as well. And, and, and they should watch you and you should watch them as you go from the end of the verse to the beginning of the next verse. Look especially at the closing of the song. You want to have everyone together as you hold out notes during the close of the song. Oftentimes, you're going to slow down the end of the song from what it has been all along. And so watch them and let them watch you as you hold things out. Okay? Look at the group anytime you're going to do something different. If you're going to come to a fermata, remember that's that little bird's eye mark that says hold this out. 
And guess what? You're the one who chooses how long to hold that note. Uh, people will look to you to know when to cut off. And then when you come to a retardando or RIT, this is a slowing down. You need to look at people and watch them as they watch you to see you slow down. Or if you speed things up, you need to get people's attention to say, hey, we're going to go a little bit faster. So look carefully at people as you do this. And then when the song ends, this is a very important time. Not only are we going to end the song together, uh, than when we first begun. Notice that the song doesn't really stop or end with the ending of your voice. There's a few brief seconds of silence where the meaning and the sentiment of the song ends in the hearts and minds of the individual. So don't rush that. Make sure that everyone has time to finish the song in their minds. So these are a few really important things. Make sure you have the song pitched correctly. Make sure that the songs that you lead are ones that you've gone over and over and over enough that you know the tune and you know the words to be able to look up at people once in a while through the song. Make sure that you maintain eye contact and smile throughout the song so that people want to sing with you. And then as you close the song, make sure everyone is able to see distinctly that you are slowing down and that you are stopping the song. And make sure to let the song end within the hearts and minds of each and every person. We'll take up with some more song leading hints in just in the next video. God bless.